Hello everyone and welcome to the summer Marketing and Managing Your Business webinar by Biz2Credit. I want to thank you all for joining us. We have an awesome lineup of tips and pointers today to get your business prepared for a terrific second half of the year. My name is Anita Campbell and I'll be joined today by two excellent panelists. Along with me today will be Rohit Arora, the CEO and co-founder of Biz2Credit.com. And I'll also be joined by marketing expert Felice Michaelberg. But before I introduce them and jump into the agenda today, I'd like to go over a few quick housekeeping details very quickly. So first, today's presentation is expected to last for a total of one hour. We will end promptly at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Now we've reserved the last 10 to 15 minutes just for questions from you as the audience. And what we'd like to ask you to do is to please uh, note the small chat box that will be over to your right. Uh, you should see a little panel with some controls. And if it's not open, if you just click the little arrow, uh, I believe it's like an orange or red arrow, it should slide open and you'll see a little chat box where you can type in questions. So we'd ask you throughout the presentation to just type in your questions as they come to you and in the last 10 to 15 minutes of the, this presentation today we will get to your questions as many as we can. Uh, if we don't get to your question someone from Biz2Credit will follow up with you after the webinar in order to answer that question. So just keep in mind we'll be speaking and presenting up until somewhere around 3.45, in other words, up until the last 10 to 15 minutes of today's presentation, which time we will open it up for questions. Also, this presentation is being recorded today, and the slides and the recording will be available after the webinar, uh, should you wish to refer back to them. On that note, why don't we get started? So let me quickly go through today's agenda. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the seasonal challenges of being a small business. And you probably know those better than, than anyone, right? Uh, and those seasonal challenges, uh, they can be uh, good challenges, they can be bad challenges, depending on the seasonality of your business. And we'll talk about those. This might be your big time of the year coming up. Uh, between now and uh, December of 2016, or it could be a slow time that you're entering into or about to enter into. Either way, that presents opportunities and also challenges. We'll be talking about that. And the way you're going to be able to leverage the opportunities is through leveraging some marketing ideas. So we have some that are specific for this summer. We're going to be talking about community involvement, we'll be talking about using sales promotions, and we'll also be talking about taking a look at the changing social media environment and how your strategy needs to adapt to that. If this is a slower time of the year, we'll have some strategies for how to deal with that. Uh, in particular, Rohit's going to talk about managing your seasonal cash flow, and if you need funding to be able to either jump on opportunities or get through a slow time, he has some pointers about how to do that. So that's what we're going to cover today. And you'll be hearing from three panelists. Uh, first, uh, Anita Campbell, that's me who's <laughs> speaking. And I'm actually the CEO and founder of Small Business Trends. We do online publishing at, at industrial scale, you might say, for small businesses with uh, advice, tips, pointers, guides, checklists, whatever it is, we publish it and we've been publishing continuously for 14 years. Uh, in addition, I also provide insights and advice at various other websites. Uh, and I can be reached uh, online. Uh, at the end of this presentation, we'll have some contact information where you can reach us uh, if you have any questions to individual panelists. But with that, I would also like to introduce Rohit Arora, in addition to being a panelist, uh, co-founder and CEO of Biz2Credit. He's also the host of today's session. He is one of the top 
experts uh, in small business finance and frequently quote, quoted. You see him all over the news, whether it's TV news or you see him in uh, print publications. Uh, he was also named Crane's New York Business Entrepreneur of the Year in 2011. Uh, Rohit, uh, welcome and uh, please share a few words. Yeah, Anita, thanks for the uh, kind introduction. So. I think this is a very important time of the year. This is like uh, the midway, so you know. So any any small business, you know, it's, it's a great time to you know pause and 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 review where where they are, you know, at at the middle of the year, and also you know what steps they can take, especially on the marketing strategy as well as you know managing their cash flow for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I think with the economy. Being in a relatively good health, uh, gas prices are, are 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 at their lowest in last 12 years in terms of you know in summer. Uh, so so we see a lot of good you know things happening for small businesses over next six months. So this is a great time to you know plan for uh, the rest of the year. Okay, good. Well, uh, thank you for that, and it's good to hear that. Um, it's good to hear a positive outlook. And I'd also like to take a moment to introduce the least. Michael Burke. She's a principal of FIM Communications. She's a marketing expert. She's an editor. Uh, she certainly knows content marketing, social media, and a wide variety of marketing practices and running a small business and, and all the things in between uh, in addition to all of her experience. So uh, welcome, Felice. Um, glad to have you here, too. Thanks, Anita. And I have been in communications and marketing for most of my career, and I've worked in many business publications on quite a variety of topics, including home textiles and business travel and some fashion thrown in there, as well as worked in corporate, communi corporate communications in the healthcare industry. Very good. Well, we'll be um, eager to hear your advice and tips and pointers throughout today's session. So with that, I want to turn this back over to Rohit Aurora and talk a little bit more about these challenges that we all face in the uh, summer and the second half of the year. Yeah, so I think that's a very good segue. Uh, so what we have seen, you know, here that, you know, businesses which are, um, you know, some businesses have traditionally summer is a slow season, like, you know, businesses located in Florida, or we see it also, you know, in the restaurant business uh, uh, in some parts of the country. Let's say if you are in a college town uh, with college holidays coming up, school holidays coming up. Uh, uh, so, uh, and for some other businesses, you know, it's it's really a busy season. Uh, either or, you know, managing the cash flow is one of the most important things, uh, including the aspect that you know how quickly you get paid, what your expenses look like. And, and also, you know, the ability to grow your business in a, in a balanced way. A lot of time business owners, you know, try to get new orders and they try to, you know, spend a lot of money in marketing uh, without, you know, really thinking about, you know, how they're going to get the ROIs on that marketing. So so that's also very important and, you know, that we, you need to plan everything. You need to plan that if there is, if there is some marketing growth going to happen, then you need to see a resultant growth in your revenue as well as profit. And then the other thing is, you know, handling slow months are critical because slow months also gives you an opportunity to plan for the busy months. So, like, let's say if you're in your in your slow season and your busy season is going to come sometime in fall, so this is a great time to, you know, review all your, uh, you know, lines of credit, you know, your situation, and also a good time to, you know, review that, you know, what kind of manpower you will need during your busy season, plan for it, you know, look into the fact that, you know, if you have an online presence, how you can improve that because it's your slow season, so you have more time doing that. And also, you know, it's, it's also a good time to go and scan your competition and see, you know, what, what else or what could you do better to gain over the rest of the competitive landscape. Yeah, that's a good point about, you know, checking out your competition, you know, take advantage of uh, this time and see what they're doing because the business environment certainly changes fast, doesn't it, Rohit? Yes, absolutely. So I want to jump a little bit. Uh, we're going to come back to Rohit uh, later on and talk about some of the nuts and bolts of financials. But with that background there about 
about you know looking at your whole situation here. The point I want to emphasize to everyone today is as a small business owner, you have a lot of tools at your disposal. Your tool bag is actually very large. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves about that. So here are a list of things that you might want to take into account. We're going to be talking about these in much more detail in the ensuing slides. But think about host a network event. Uh, you can put on an event, and it can it doesn't have to be a very expensive event, especially in the summer, because uh, you know in the summer months you can take advantage of the outdoors. You can you can have a cookout, you can have a picnic uh, type of environment, uh, an open house that's uh, partly outdoors, and it can be very uh, inexpensive. Uh, you can take this time, as Rohit says, to take a look at your competition and along with that you're going to want to look at your business strategy and see if it's still working, see if you need to make changes. We're going to have some tips about how to do that. But also th think about promotions that you can launch. There are a lot of summertime themed promotions that can come into play and you can use social media to drive those. You can run promotions on social media too, such as you know, flash sales and so on that you can uh, publicize through Facebook and Twitter and other places. And you can use that also to promote customer loyalty. Those, those promotions can, can really drive the repeat business and the customers you already have to remind them about you. Uh, community involvement big in the summertime. Again, lots of events in most places, uh, and that could be anything from, you know, any sort of um, charity, uh, you know, a walk or a run for charity that you and employees can take part in, uh, along with the rest of the community or other sorts of community involvement. And we're also, at the end, really going to talk, you know, after you do all this stuff, including updating your branding materials, <laughs> you might want to take a vacation yourself because we know how important it is as a business owner to refresh yourself. You know, it's hard being a business owner. I have to say that. It takes a lot of energy. And anybody who doesn't think that it takes a lot of energy <laughs> hasn't been there and done that. And so we have to protect our our health and our state of mind as business owners too. And that's where refreshing ourselves and taking a vacation really can help interject a burst of energy in your business. It can really make a big difference in your business. It's not just for you personally, but as the leader of the business, when you're enthused and energized and refreshed, that's contagious with the rest of your team. So that's really important to do. I want to talk a little bit about some of those summertime themed promotions that we mentioned early. So here are a list of a few things on the screen. You can do something like 4th of July events. You know, <laughs> that's coming up. But you know, think, of, think a little bit later in the summer as well. National Ice Cream Day is another example coming up. That's a great opportunity, whether you're in the food business or not, to take advantage of that. And, and we have a promotion on that 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 takes into account the fact that it's going to be ice cream day. And you don't have to limit it to ice cream day. You can find calendars online of all sorts of days out there. There's a, there's, every day of the year is a day for something. I trust, trust me, there, there is something every day of the year out there. And you can find these calendars that will tell you what day is coming up. Uh, but you're going to have uh, kids going back to college soon. Um, uh, young people, and so you're going to have college freshmen, move-in day, Labor Day, whatever it is. One point I want to make about this is you can start small. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these events, and particularly if you're trying something new. It's always good to experiment and experiment in a very low-risk way. And what does that mean, low risk? Low risk means don't spend a lot of money, and don't spend too much time on it either. Do it do something small, something manageable that you can do in an easy uh, way to bite off a chunk and do it and see how it does. And if you get a little traction from it, do another event or figure out what you need to do a little bit differently. But it doesn't need to cost a lot of money, but it can make a big difference in your sales. Uh, you want to host a networking event? Hey, you know, here's um, you know, a couple of ideas. Um, one of the benefits of hosting a networking event is you can generate a lot of leads for your business. And you can get direct referrals 
from people. You know, there's nothing like meeting people in person to have them you know, remember you, to know that um, who you are, and to think of you in your business the next time that they need a product or service that you offer. You also build professional connections. And what that means is you engage with other professionals who, if they're called upon to give a referral, may think of you, and they may refer you. And, and that can be a very powerful source of business for small businesses. I know some small businesses that you know, rely primarily on referrals from other professionals. So those are really, really important to them. And a lot of small businesses refer, rely on word of mouth. And what that means is they're relying on people telling someone else how wonderful your business was to them, that you did something great. So when it comes to hosting an event, pick a location, decide what size this event's going to be, how many people are you going to invite, how are you going to invite them, you know, is this going to be a, a word of mouth invitation kind of thing, are you actually going to print up invitation cards, whatever it is. Um, do your research, you know, check out the venue, uh, or if you're going to hold it on your own premises, you know, make sure you've thought of everything that you need to know about you know, what you have to have, you know, where exactly on your premises you're going to hold it, you know, how many refreshments you need to have, have, all of those things. Lists are really important when it comes to events, so trust me on this. Make lists and make more lists and more lists and write everything down and it will really help you. You know, and use it to promote your business. I mean, don't be shy. It shouldn't be about just promotion, uh, but you can certainly certainly weave in references and promotion to your business in any event. And we have to remember that that's really the point of holding an event. So, you know, don't be too shy about bringing up the fact that you're in business and you're looking for more business. When it comes to community involvement, keep in mind what's going on in the community. Is there a big event coming up, a walk, something your employees can be part of, you know, or, you know, could it be something like an adopt the highway type of program? If there's any kind of a natural disaster, can you jump in and help? I mean, and you know, think about this not only for the marketing part of it, but also think about it as supporting your community as well. Develop a volunteer plan. You know, you'll feel really good, and your employees will love it too. Everybody loves to have a purpose, and when you feel you're doing something like helping your community and those around you, it, it can really make you feel great. And that's a source of energy and refreshed enthusiasm as well. So you know, don't overlook the impact that it will have on you as the business owner and your team. Uh, and make sure it's a real company effort. You know, make sure that everybody's bought into it and, and everybody wants to be a part of it. Uh, and understands the importance of supporting the community. And then here again, don't be shy about telling people about you know, your community involvement. It really pays to let people know. You know. Don't be crass about it. I mean, don't make it sound like the only reason you participated was you thought it was a marketing event because that really shouldn't be your um, motivation. But just make sure that you are telling people. Uh, one other thing I want to say here, it too, is to keep in mind the social media challenges. You know, social media changes. A few years ago, Instagram w wasn't even in effect, and now you know we're seeing more and more businesses using Instagram for marketing. And Facebook just keeps growing and growing. The latest statistics I saw for Facebook show one billion average daily users. That's a day. One billion people. That's a huge platform. So take advantage of platforms like this, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You know, don't try to do everything. Pick one or two that you feel comfortable with that are relevant to your business, where your audience appears, and participate in them and learn the ropes of them. And I know Felice will be telling us more about how to do that. With that, I want to turn it over to Felice Michaelberg. Hi. Uh, summer truly is the perfect time to brush up on your social media skills. It's a great time to increase your social media, media presence. Um, it's not that hard to do. And if you're not an expert on the social media world, it's great to pull in your intern. Family and friends can point you in the right direction as well. 
and some of the benefits of being involved in social media from a marketing perspective is really to get your name out there in the community. And when you do that, you're increasing your customer loyalty. And part of customer loyalty is you're increasing your immediate customer service. You are, you and your customer can be working together closer. You're answering their questions immediately, very right, quickly. You're having a direct correlation to what their needs are. And you're educating your customer about your, your business. If you're a flower business, you can explain about flowers. If you have a cheese store, you can explain pairings of cheeses and wines. Um, you can provide guides and videos all on your website or through various social media outlets. And by doing all that, you're improving your customer experience. You're reaching customers on a regular basis. You're personalizing your message. You're hopefully using lots and lots of photos. Photos are the way to go these days with photos of events you're holding, events in the community, um, putting faces with names of your employees, showing them who you are as well as your, your store, business, your services in general. You also, by, by increasing your customer experience and improving it, you are expressing your gratitude to your customers and making them feel part of the experience as well. And one other way to do that is to ask for their feedback. So they feel like they can give their input into what your business is all about. For example, if you own a bookstore, ask them what their favorite books were this summer. Ask them what their classics are. And include that information on your web page, on your Facebook page, and they will be thrilled to see their names up there. From that perspective, we can get directly into actually how you market your social media to your community, to your public, to your customers, and future customers. One way to do that is to feature a product of the week. Whether it's your latest and greatest new products, whether it's your, your best-selling items, whether it's a service you're especially proud of, it could be anything from the new iced coffee flavors, the hottest jewelry out there, outdoor lawn furniture, hats for summer, whatever you might want to focus on, just keep it current, change it all the time, and make sure your customers are aware that they can check it out online as well as in your store. Another way to do this is to post pictures of best-selling items as we discussed just now, um, but put it on your Facebook page, put it on your Twitter, uh, tweet it out through your Twitter, use Instagram, and people are out and about. They want to see these things out in the public. They want to know they're out there. So as I said, you can show your customers at the local festival. You can show your customers in your store if you have a music night at your cafe, uh, book readings if it's a book club. If you're involved in street fairs, you can show pictures of you and your employees out there meeting and greeting and put that on your Facebook page as well. And by doing all that, you're getting your word out there. And part of that whole message, besides words and pictures, is using hashtags. Hashtags are basically a great way to promote your business. It's, um, it's a number sign or pound sign followed by a keyword or phrase. And it attracts new customers, increases your presence, and if you're using social media, you really want to use your hashtags. An example of that is a hashtag in a town, like hashtag Asbury Park, hashtag in your business, like hashtag Bob's Hats. And uh, you can also do a hashtag, hashtag local business or local business and your town name. One thing to keep in mind, though, is don't overdo the hashtags. Uh, check on different social media sites. For example, Instagram says don't use any more than three hashtags in a given blurb because it can throw off the, uh, the site and the, the way to research. One great example is right here, Foley's New York Pub and Restaurant. As you can see, it mentions who they are. On the right corner, it shows all their social media icons. And then in the center, the hashtag, the right stuff, where they're featuring stuffed burgers at Foley's. Another way to promote your business is through sales promotions. It's a great way to develop customer loyalty and reward customers who, who repeat customers um, and increase your sales and develop a stronger relationship with those customers. One way to do that is to provide cards that customers can bring in. You know, that you can stamp it, you can punch it. Let's say every 10 visits, you let them know that they will receive you know, $10 off their next purchase. Or you can use a point system. It's based on how much money they spend. It can go towards a discount for, again, a future purchase or a specific item. You also can provide incentives to customers who will tag your items on their social media sites. And this way, you're getting their buy-in as well. You can ask them. Sometimes they might do it on their own. You can ask them to like you on your Facebook page. 
And many times by doing that, there, that is enough reward. But if not, you can say, sign up on Facebook, be my friend or my fan, and you can get 20% off an item. Another opportunity is to offer discounts of new products and multiple purchases. Uh, buy one, get one free is always a great item. And for summer, there's people going through so many things so often, whether it's gardening tools, whether it's sandals, whether it's tote bags or T-shirts. You know they're going to buy one and grab another one. So by offering that incentive, it often gets them to purchase more. And it's great to uh, offer, also offer to bring a friend. And when, wait, that way you're taking your popular, your um, repeat customer, and having them spread the word, which is always the best reward. You can have flyers in your store to say, tell a friend. You can post it on your site and say, download this coupon and bring it in. And they will, you, you and your friend will get a discount or a coupon or a, or a special prize or load into a raffle for another prize. And you can also have a, a newsletter on your website page. And by doing that, you can say sign up, and you immediately will receive 10% you know, off a future purchase. One other thing you can do uh, before you get to the back burner is don't forget emails. Emails are a very important way to reach customers. You can send out emails once a week, twice a week. Don't overdo it, because then customers may ignore it. And you can put in there your sales, your new products, your services, and upcoming events. And if your, customer, if your customer truly is slowing down for the summer and you have a little bit of time to breathe, it's always a great time to sort of re-examine your website presence and give it a fresh eye. Make sure the photos are up to date. Make sure your employees' bios, if you include them, are in there. Make sure your services are current. Make sure, for example, if you're a pharmacy and you do deliveries, make sure the distance is listed, how far you'll go, and your location and your directions to get to your business are listed there. Don't forget to register your business online for online directories. It's very easy to do. Most customers don't even use Yellow Pages anymore, but they do go online to look for your services, for menus if you're a restaurant, for your hours, for your location, and to know how to get to your store. There are many free, line, free online directory services. Uh, you can find them on Google, on Yahoo, on Bing. There are some that are more specific to small businesses, like Merchant Circle, Manta, or White Pages to highlight your product and services. Some do charge a fee, so be careful to make sure you find the right service that's for you. And if you haven't already started, it's time to start posting blogs, which will, incre which will increase your search engine optimization, or SEO. And we know you're busy, and we know running a business is a lot of work. So, so start small. Do one blog a week. And you know it's four to six paragraphs, and basically on a topic that will interest your audience. And keep it simple, keep it succinct. For example, if you're a paint store, you can list paint techniques or colors that are hot for a summer product, uh, project outdoors. If you're a party store, ways to decorate uh, your, you know, for your next party or how to remember that special someone. But before you post them, check online to make sure you're using keywords in your, so the search engines can pick up your, um, your post and your blog. You can vary those words in your headline, on your subhead, or in your captions. Um, you can find key free keyword research sites on Google, especially Google Keyword Planner and Google, Google Trends, and there are other paid ones you can look for as well. Other things you can do during the summer, during a slower time, is gather online reviews and develop testimonials. And also, easy to do. One thing is um, when a customer approaches you and says, I had a great experience in your store, that was the best ice cream I ever had, ask them, hey, can we use that information and post it on our site? And sometimes they'll put it on your site on their own or your Facebook page. You also can um, check online for additional reviews that they've posted, people have posted elsewhere. If you have a business involving food and drink, you can check Yelp or TripAdvisor or Urban Spoon. If you have a service, you can check Consumer Affairs or Trustpilot or Google+. There's lots and lots of places to look for, look for um, reviews that have been posted, and you can incorporate them in your own web page and Facebook. Facebook. And if you do have any more time, and this is important, don't forget to ex examine your strategic marketing plan. Review what you've done to this point, and check on what you could be working on for the future. Um, you know, make some changes for the second half of the year, and if all is going swimmingly, you can start planning for 2017. <laughs> That's good. Uh, we hope all is going swimmingly this uh, summer, Felice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very good. Um, 
Okay, any other final thoughts uh, before we go to Rohit and start talking about finances when it comes to marketing? I think that's covered a lion's share of the information for summer. Okay, good. All right, well with that, I'd like to turn back to Rohit. And um, so Felice just mentioned doing a strategic marketing plan, but if we also look to the bigger uh, picture, um, let's talk about business strategy. Why is summer so important when it comes to business strategy? Yeah, so, uh, so I think Felice made some very important points regarding marketing and you know social media uh, stuff and I think that's where the business plan makes a lot of sense because what we have seen in the past is a lot of time when you know the businesses are trying to put together a marketing strategy you know they have very little idea about you know what kind of marketing they have to do whether it's unrelated or related marketing and that can you know lead to issues uh, even in terms of their financial performance which will impact their creditworthiness. So I think uh, it's extremely important that you know, every business should have a business plan. You know, business plan doesn't mean that you have to write uh, you know, uh, uh, 30, 40, 50 pages of a plan but it should be something which is easily uh, you know, digestible and, uh, and like easily understood. And I think that's very important because as the world is changing so quick that you, know, you have to keep constantly figuring out that the product or service that you are providing you know, the need for that is changing, you know, our new competitors coming in the market. A prime example is, till two years back, you know, uh, any business out there, you know, didn't have to worry about, you know, mobile, uh, you know, what, what people are doing on mobile. And in the last two years, you know, now every business has to figure out a way to engage customers coming through mobile. So whether it's like they're buying it through mobile, they are just browsing it through mobile, they're just, you know, checking you out as a business through mobile, but you need to have a full-fledged mobile strategy. So it doesn't matter whether you sell online, you sell offline, you know, whether you're, you're in a restaurant business, you're in a B2B business, because that's how more and more people are starting to access their piece of information. And then the other thing is that, you know, uh, do you need to, you know, change your org structure? Because as you know, social media and mobile becomes more prevalent, you know, you need people, actually younger people, even in certain, you know, uh, job titles or job roles where you need actually less experience than more. That sounds counterintuitive but you know, you know because the world is changing so quick. And then the other thing also is that you know how does that change your company? How does that change the mission of your company? Because the mission is extremely important and mission needs to be updated all the time. It's like an example is like Netflix when they started their mission was to make the whole you know DVD rental business easy. But over time it changed to you know making the programming seamless by going into an online streaming uh, you know, strategy. So it's very important that your mission, if it changes over time, it's actually not a bad thing, but you need to have a clearly articulated mission because that mission, a clear mission will bring you a clear vision of how to do things. And then the, so, and then the sales forecasting, because sales forecasting is really you have to work on a best case scenario and you have to you know, uh, do a worst case scenario and, and and plan accordingly. You know, in, in any business we have seen it takes double the time and the, and double the money that you anticipate you know for you to achieve your target. So you have to say that you know if, if you want to go from you know a business making hundred thousand dollars a year to five hundred thousand dollars a year, what resources you need to you know allocate and, and how much time you need to go and achieve it and then see that if you double those uh, expenses and double the time will you be able to you know still uh, be a cash flow positive business. So, so the whole thing is that you know you have to prepare for future, and and you also have to prepare for slow months uh, upfront because because the more you know there's a famous saying that the more uh, you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. Uh, so, so that's very very important. You know that you need to plan for next six months or in next year, and this is the great time to do that. You know. Yeah, we can go on to the next slide. Yeah. So I think one of the best ways to manage your cash flow, and, and I know most of the small businesses hate, you know, uh, doing any kind of accounting. They don't want to look at books. You know, they are very, you know, focused on doing their own business. They are very, you know, nervous about, you know, looking at the cash flow. And uh, uh, but you know, having said that, you know, if you are a business owner, you know, even if you are not doing your own QuickBooks entry, you need to understand what a PN, PNL means, what a balance sheet means, what an account receivable means what an account payables mean because I've seen a lot of businesses which 
could be very profitable but they still go out of business because they're not able to balance their account receivables with account payables. So what I really mean by that is that you know you you are billing a lot of customers but you know the customers are not paying on time while you are spending all your money you know to actually deliver product or services to the customers and then you know you have a very large account receivable which is outstanding and then you're not able to meet all your obligations so that lands you in, in deep trouble. So I think that's very important. The other thing that you know we have seen that in order to maintain your books, in order to maintain your account receivable, account payable, and most of the business owners are not are not accounting people, and nor we are expecting it. Hire a bookkeeper at least. Hire a part-time bookkeeper. Hire an accountant. Hire somebody who can you know give you a cash flow analysis. Who can give you a PNL and balance sheet every month. You know, if not every week, uh, because it's very important as a business owner for you to be on top of the financial situation and then that also helps you to you know forecast things like revenue expenses account receivables and what we have done at Bistro Credit here is, is something very interesting is that you know we have created a dashboard where business owners can use it for free they can just sync up their bank accounts they can sync up their, their you know other like their, their payment accounts and everything and then Bistro Credit has this whole business analyzer tool which actually calculates their revenue it, it actually gives them revenue forecast it gives them the you know forecast of the cash flow and and also you know and that how it impacts your personal credit and business credit and that's very important because that's going to really decide at the end of the day you know because eventually you will need some access to credit any growing business needs money um, and and actually actually it's a good sign if your business needs money because that means that it, it's a growing business so if you maintain your books well if you are able to you know get to a point where you know exactly you know what kind of assets and what kind of liabilities you have then it's a lot easier for you to investigate all your financial options whether you're looking for a line of credit whether you're looking to get a credit card initially because the business credit card helps you to uh, build your business uh, credit uh, score also or whether you're looking for loans or in certain cases you know if you're out there trying to raise equity capital so in that case you know especially when you're trying to raise equity capital for you to have uh, very tight, uh, you know, reporting systems in terms of financials is extremely critical. Uh, even banks today look at your historical financials. They look at your forecasted financials. They look at how good you are, or or, or how good you are, are as a business and a business owner, uh, you know, in terms of you know knowing, you know, that how your uh, financials work, how your profit margins work, how your expenses work. So I think that's a very important aspect that by whether you are maintaining books or not, it doesn't matter. As a business owner, you need to be on top of these things. This is as important as marketing and business development because you know if you if you are not able to maintain your books, if you have issues with your financials, then you know surviving in a business will become very tough. So I think it's a very important aspect, and I know a lot of business owners have that problem. I think the other thing that a lot of people ask us this question is you know because a lot of business owners are so busy. They don't have, you know, in-house CFOs, and they're looking for funding. And when they start looking for funding, they they want money quick, and they want it in the least possible, not just time, but also least possible documentation, less suspense out there. So what we have been trying to do at Mr. Fred for the last seven years now is that, that, you know, we have tried to demystify the whole process. We are, you know, making it a lot easier for businesses to get access to credit, you know, in as little as 24 hours, and we. And we offer all kind of products, including bank loans, non-bank loans, uh, and and other products like you know factoring products also. And the idea there is that you know uh, we are trying to make the life easier and simpler for small business owners because we realize they are not CFOs; they don't have a lot of idea of what kind of financing product will be the best for them. But they know what what they need the money for. And then, then what we are trying to do is you know instead of uh, really asking for a lot of documentation and a lot of historical data from the business owners. We have built digital platforms which can get data from different sources including IRS, your bank accounts, uh, your payment accounts, your payroll accounts obviously with your consent and then construct a cash flow analysis and give you a scorecard through which you know you can get access to credit very quickly. So I think that that is also extremely important you know to make things easier and simpler. And this slide really talks about what kind of product. So we obviously, you know, are looking to serve the small and mid-sized businesses through their whole credit life cycle. And we realize that, you know, there will be times when they need quick money and when they need money, you know, which 
uh, you know, is required for something like, you know, paying your payroll, fixing something up quickly. And there are needs when you need the money, which is more long term, traditional kind of, you know, bank loan. So, so we at Visto Credit, uh, you know, provide multiple products on one single application so that you don't have to fill out multiple applications, you know. Uh, in an ideal scenario, you can just, uh, you know, sync up your online accounts, you can e-sign, we will pull the data from IRS. So we try to make it very easy and simple process for uh, the business owners. And, and, and now, you know, recently we have launched some new products including equipment financing, you know, which we are doing with, with the large banks. So, so we offer very competitive pricing in that, you know, we are also doing a lot of commercial real estate loans now including bridge loans as well as long term loans. We also help, you know, refinancing the existing debts and for, you know, smaller guys or or retail businesses which accept a lot of credit card uh, as part of their revenue stream. You know, we also offer Merchant Cash Advance, which is a very seamless product, and you, you know, we have integrated into your POS and collaborating with a large number of payment firms so that you know you don't have to give us any piece of data. We can get all that data from them with your permission and can underwrite you in real time and can you know give you access to credit very quickly. So the idea is to you know take care of you as a virtual CFO and give you the tools and the dashboards to or to benchmark your business, see your business, uh, you know, and then you know choose from the right option and then keep working with you on an ongoing basis from there. So that is something very very important. Uh, now this is a very important slide. You know, we started bringing out uh, our lending index. You know, which was uh, so I've been asked a lot of these questions. You know, who is approving? Who is giving me loan? Who is not giving me loan? So sometime in you know early 2011, you know we started bringing out a lending index where we said that we will benchmark, you know all the different options which are open for the uh, small business borrowers. So we now map it. So every month there is a lending index which you can you know, visit on our website. It's biztocredit.com. Uh, so there you know you can see that. And the idea there is to give you full transparency. So we see you know big banks are approving around you know one out of five loan apps, which is still pretty low but it's still better than when we were three four years back where it was like one out of uh, 10 apps so at least we have dub like double that approval rate you know small banks are approving more uh, typically they will do more SBA loans which are the government guarantee loan programs institutional investors are you know pension funds hedge funds credit funds uh, you know they have started uh, you know so they came into the small business lending market in the last two three years and they have been able to grow very quickly uh, because of speed as well as you know the pricing is little higher than banks but it's still a lot lower than most of the alternative lending options that the business owners had available and alternative lenders are your typical cash advance lenders or your factoring companies you know where they still approve a very decent and healthy chunk of loans uh, or uh, or what we call future receivables uh, but they're more expensive and then there are credit unions you know which are priced well but unfortunately over last year and a half, you know, they have lost a lot of their steam uh, in trying to fund small businesses, which is un unfortunate. Uh, so overall, net-net, we are seeing big banks starting to come back and we are seeing a lot of activity in the institutional investor space, uh, which is, you know, looking to build portfolio of small business loans, you know, in the market. And, and I think that has been a good addition in the marketplace uh, because, you know, uh, credit is still uh, tight for small businesses. It's not as tight as it used to be two, three years back. And I think there's still a lot of things to be done. Uh, you know, another big question that people ask us is that, you know, what kind of uh, funds they can have. So we, we can, uh, you know, provide you anywhere between $5,000 to $5 million. Typically working capital uh, is between Five to ten thousand dollars at the lower end and goes up to half a million, and and these bigger loan amounts are for commercial real estate and and say equipment financing deals, uh, and and then what we are seeing is that you know we are seeing more high quality businesses coming on our platform, you know, uh, uh, so that doesn't mean that if you are in business for, uh, so you can you can get money on our platform even if you, if you're in business for six months, but typically we are seeing more businesses which are coming on our platform for two to five years. Of annual revenue of between half, half a million uh, to like almost three million dollars, you know, uh, and employee size five to ten employees, and then 
you know uh, a decent chunk of those are women owned entrepreneurs minority uh, businesses as well as first time business owners because they have very hard time you know uh, otherwise to get any kind of access to credit in the marketplace and and that's part of our mission always has been to to help the underserved in the market to get more access to credit yeah so we can go to the next slide so i think this is very important you know we take a lot of pride in how we serve our customers so so if you go on our website on our home page you will find a lot of customer te testimonials you know please mention something about you know getting customer te testimonials so we are on trust pilot we are we are rated as number 1 uh, you know in the country among all the online marketplaces and lenders and that's important you know uh, that you know we go and serve our customers and then get great reviews because it also helps us to grow our business and this is an example of you know uh, a a hispanic woman uh, business owner who came to us you know uh, some time back and she has a uh, she has a food truck here in in the hamptons uh, which is again a seasonal business and she needed money to you know fix her truck and and then expand her business and we have micro lenders on our platform you know who are fully synced up so someone like axion you know could approve her through our platform within a half an hour and she got the money very quickly and she was able to even expand her business and you know go to a point now where you know this year she is catering uh, in uh, in the hamptons so not just she has a food truck but she is also catering in hampton and she is taking advantage of the busy season right now actually so that i think is a very important example of showing that you know it's not just big of the smaller businesses that we are helping we are also helping a lot of very small businesses yep next slide oh yeah, very good very good uh, rohit that was um excellent and um uh, with that, I'm going to, uh, before we get started on the question and answer, I want to turn back to uh, Felice Michaelberg. And Felice, just quickly talk to us a little bit about the need to refresh and recharge as a business owner. Right. It, it's important for everyone at, at certain parts of the year, and summer is a great time for this, just to take a step back and re relax, and rewind, you know, clear your head, catch up on all your paperwork. Just to, just take a little t break from the day to day, and sort of figure out what you need to do in the year to come. And part of that could be training sessions for the fall. It could be time with your employees, advanced planning. All those things can be done as you take a deep breath. Some companies uh, they take small businesses. They um, give their employees long weekends where they might do alternative alternate Fridays or Mondays. So that employees aren't calling out sick on a Monday. They say, OK, you take Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and someone else comes in Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, they cover themselves that way. But it's important, it's, well, it's important for you and your employees to take time to yourself. You have to realize you still have a business to run. So set your schedule for the summer. Do it now if you haven't already done it. And set vacations in place with everybody. Have backups just in case. And be flexible, because sometimes plans do change. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, thank you, Felice. Well, we'll be sure to uh, uh, refresh ourselves at some point during the summer here. And, um, and with that, uh, I would like to, at this point, <clears throat> turn to the um, Q&A session. Um, I, actually, before I do that, I just want to point out that in the presentation, we do have uh, links uh, where you can find past webinars, research reports, ebooks, uh, the lending index that Digital Credit points out, which is very, very good. Uh, lots of terrific uh, detail in those reports. I love to get those reports, uh, as well as success stories in the blog where you can get uh, tips and advice. So in this presentation, rather than trying to you know, quickly take down these links, uh, I'll leave this up while we're asking a few questions here. I want to remind everyone, use the little uh, controls that you'll see over to the right. Uh, if they're not open up, just um, click the little arrow to open that up. You'll see a little box. Type in any questions you have. But I do have a few questions to get started here uh, that have come in ahead of time. Uh, Rohit, first question is for you. If I were to focus on one or two things in my business, to change in order to improve my business um, loan credit worthiness, what would you recommend that a business owner work on? 
I think that's a very good question. So if if you're looking at two top things, the first thing that you have to do is that you know you have to uh, create a balance between your account receivables and account payable. And why that is very important is that if you don't pay your vendors on time, if you are a delayed, uh, if you're delaying all those payments, you know that impacts your business credit. That also impacts your credibility in the market. And you also need to get into a habit of you know collecting money from your clients. You know. Especially this is very important in B2B businesses. If you're in a retail business, you know, you need to keep your overheads, your fixed costs, you know, uh, not more than 25 to 30% of your revenue because anything above that will create a lot of issues and again that will create imbalances. And I think the, and then the second thing is that, you know, you need to uh, have a clear cut plan and strategy, you know, like you know, what business I am in, what should I be doing, you know, like an example I will give you, you know, we recently financed a the wine store and this guy is in a is in a Jewish neighborhood. So what he started doing was that you know for all the Jewish festivals, you know, he started doing a free wine tasting of the kosher wines. And you know by that he increased his sale by 30%. So so that was a very smart move. Know your customer, know your neighborhood. You know, if, if you're in a local business, you know, know what your neighborhood is really com composed of, what your neighborhood is, is looking for, and then go and you know do things. That will just improve your business and it will also bring you a lot of goodwill. Because that's very important, you know, in, in any business, if you have a goodwill, that means positive word of mouth, that means lower marketing cost, that means referral customers and repeat customers. So repeat and referral customers is key to success of any, of any small business. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rohit. Next question is for Felice. So Felice, with so many social media networks out there, it's overwhelming. You could spend all of your time on social media and not get much in return. If you had to choose a social media network to focus on, how do you go about choosing the right one where you're going to get some ROI from your efforts? That is a very good question. And, and what I find fascinating is that question just keeps evolving. There have been older uh, social media outlets that have faded away, and new ones are always coming up. But I find the tried and true ones, there's only a handful that have, are still around that, are, that are, seem to be used by a variety of ages and a variety of uh, backgrounds. So I think the best thing to do is to talk to your customers and find out what kind of things they're on. Find out what which ones are the ones they're using the most. So you're probably going to find Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are the big are the big three, but there are other ones out there. LinkedIn for business professionals is an example. Uh, so the best thing to do is talk to your customers, find out what they're interested in, find out where your competition keep, is starting to put their information as well. Uh, just all you have to do is Google their name, see what comes up on the internet, and go from there. And I think those are a good place to start to see where your fit is. Thank you, Felice. That's great. Back to Rohit with another question at this point. So Rohit, if I am preparing a business plan, are there a couple of critical things that should be in that business plan that lenders look for? Or is the business plan mostly for the business itself? I think this is a very good question. So the first thing is the business plan is before you look at the lenders, it's for yourself. So you need to, you know, be very confident that how true that plan is because, you know, Excel has a very, you know, the, what they call is power of compounding, you know, what Albert Einstein said, you know, that's the most powerful and the most dangerous thing in the world. Uh, so, you know, if you put your business plan in an Excel sheet, you know, and, and, and it will show like an extrapolated growth. But, you know, you as a business owner should know that, you know, what growth is really achievable with your resources, with the time, with the effort that you can put in. So first of all, you have to be true to yourself because, you know, you can prepare a business plan and you can go to a lender. The lender, you know, will look at the business plan while giving uh, you, uh, you know, money. But, but what they are looking more is, you know, how realistic you are with the business plan. So there's no, there's no harm if the business plan is showing, you know, not very high growth. So an example, if, you, if you're in retail food business, average growth is 3-4% a year. Now, now, now in that business plan, if you start putting a growth rate of 10 to 15 percent, you know, people will start figuring out that you are either too naive or you are not realistic. So until it's, it's, it's a revolutionary idea like what Chipotle was at one point of time. So, so the key thing is that, you know, you have to be very grounded, very realistic. And the best way to build more credibility is 
what you say under promise and over deliver. So, so I think that's 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 very important because that business plan should become your document also to guide you. And and what they say it should be achievable, but it should be something that should stretch you. So it should not be too easy, but it should also not be you know like a moonshot kind of stuff. So the idea there is that you know it should act like your document, and then that document is, is something that you can take to a lending institution so that they can you know work with you and you know help you to get access to credit. Great, excellent. Now I've got a question again for Felice on the marketing side. This one has to do with blogging. So you mentioned about um, blogging uh, in your business to provide customer uh, information and, and pointers uh, for customers and, and to illustrate some of your products and services and, and, uh, and, and how to use them. Um, relating to blogging, is there any rule of thumb, like, do, do, you know, I find it hard to write, so do I have to write a certain number of blog posts per week or can I just do what I can fit in? What do you recommend? Well, I do recommend if it's the first time doing a blog, uh, creating a blog, to start small and just do one a week. Uh, one or two a week would be enough because you don't want to overwhelm your customers. You just don't want to bore them as well. If they have information repeating, you don't want to do that. Um, but one thing to do is you can write in bullet points. You can say, you know, the ice cream flavors this week, this is what seems to be the most popular. It can be, you know, vanilla chocolate swirl. It can be strawberry shortcake, whatever it might be. Uh, it could be key times to come when it's not crowded. Here are the key areas. So you can provide information that's valuable to them. Um, and you can also, if you just don't have the time, you can have guest speakers. You can have, if you have a gift shop and you have a really hot line out there, you can ask someone from that store to provide, you know, reasons to purchase this item or where you can take it, where we'll get the most exposure, uh, what people love about it the most. And that way you're pulling in their expertise as well. Excellent. Thank you. And I think we have time for one more quick uh, question and answer, and this is for Rohit. So Rohit, if I come to Biz2Credit and I'm not sure the type of loan do I need, that I need, do, do I have to know that first or how will, you, how will I find out what the right lending product is for me? Yeah, I think, I think that's a very, very, very good question because that was the whole premise why we set up Biz2Credit was that, you know, we are not expecting the business owners to know what is the best product for them, what, what our promise uh, to all business owners is that you know you fill out a simple two-page application and you know ban and we run all kind of you know different you know analysis on your bank data on your other data sets and come back with you with the best product and also give you the comparison with other products so that you can see what is the best product for you and also recommend you uh, the right products uh, on an ongoing basis so i think that is something very important is that you know we are not expecting you to be experts in you know Financing, we are not expecting you to know what is the best product for you. But what we are just expecting is that you know you you should know what you use, what you need the money for, and then you know quickly fill out uh, an application which you can do, do through your mobile if you want to do directly and get options. And then we also provide what we call free consultation. So we have these uh, you know uh, our trained credit trained you know staff you know here in US you know which will help you. So, so you can set up a phone call with them and they will call you at the appointed time and will walk you through all the options. And that we do for every customer, irrespective of the fact whether they, they take or they accept financing from us or not. Okay, very good. And uh, I want to finally point out that we are just about out of time here. Uh, I want to thank our panelists, Rohit Arora, the CEO of Biz2 Credit, and Felice Michaelberg, Principal of FIM Communications. On your screen in front of you, you can find contact information. I think it's wonderful that someone like Rohit actually publishes his email address, so thank you very much for doing that. It's rohit.arora at biz2credit.com, or you can go to biz2credit.com and just follow you know, the instructions on the website as to how to get started over there. Uh, and on behalf of our panelists, I would like to thank everyone for joining us and know that this webinar has been recorded and it and the presentation will be available.
thank you, and the presentation is now concluded. Thank you. Thank you.